Hello guys and welcome back to another episode and today we're going to take the original Intellivision, the old model, I believe 1978 or so, uh, unit and this one had a couple interesting problems. This was actually a, a customers of mine. Uh, there was no power. I fixed the no power issue and then I brought it to his attention that we could do an audio video mod. So take it from being the old slide, you know, coax connector to the red, white, yellow composite RCA output and give it the video that this Intellivision deserves. So guys, sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, and let me show you how easy it is, or difficult, to add composite RCA video out and bring this machine into a newer millennium So the first thing we're going to need, of course, is a Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> this is a screwdriver that's been with me forever. Um, poof, I'd say well over 25 years, back in my Radio Shack days. And, of course, I'll give you a close-up of this board. It's actually quite nice. It came done already, which is what I wanted to do this time. I did the last one for the Atari, and I did it myself. And it wasn't really that bad, but I'd rather have it done for me. Um, I'll leave a link to the, uh, in the descriptions below for the mod and where I got it. It was an eBay item. I couldn't find it anywhere cheaper. So I will uh, definitely leave that link. So basically we got to remove screw here, 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 and here. So there's six screws. It's going to be awesome. If this turns out well, I'm actually going to if it impresses me as much as I think it does, because I've been wanting to do um, the same thing, whereas I did it to my Atari, I did it to uh, my ColecoVision. Unfortunately, I didn't film the ColecoVision. Uh, one day I'll be doing someone else's. Uh, I'll be able to film it then to show you guys. But this is something I've been wanting to do. I wanted to bring the Intellivision into a more modern footprint. And uh, I got a little bit of a love for the Intellivision, but it, it's a different nostalgia. I never owned one. Never had one as a kid, but pretty much close to completing the collection right now. I'm like 40-something games away from it being complete. And uh, I don't know, I just enjoyed collecting for it, even though some of the stuff is rather weird. But anyway, enough talk. Let's get this done. Oof. There's the inside of an Intellivision, guys. So now what we have to do, we have to remove this plate. So this plate here has to come off, and again... <laughs> funny as it is, six screws. And the last one right here. Another thing that people were wondering about too is the controllers replaceable. Because these controllers were actually built in, whereas as the system got newer, like the Intellivision 2, you were able to unplug them. Well the answer to that is yes, you can actually unplug them internally and replace them that way. So they're still replaceable, the question is finding them, which means you'd have to find another dead one that had good controllers to take from that. But other than that though, yes, you can absolutely take them. Okay, so now we have to unplug a few things. One is right here. Hopefully I don't pull any wires out. Okay, that's unplugged. The other one is right here. That's unplugged. Kind of neat, it's just pins that go into this really really old style of doing things that's for sure none of this flip clip you know modern uh, ribbon cable stuff we see today that's for sure um, we need to unplug that 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 apparently this one at least they unplug easy that's for sure and this guy right here. So basically we've now unplugged the power supply is basically what has happened. Um, and any controllers, I believe this is a controller and this is a controller. So there's your controller ports right there, these right here. So that's how easy they are to change. Honestly, not very hard. Not even needing to really, well I guess you kind of got to take it apart because, you know, it's, it's all ran through and pain in the butt. But anyway. Okay. So here's our motherboard. Now remember when I said this was relatively easy, but there was something that was going to be a pain in the butt? Check this out. 
they soldered the two metal pieces together. Yeah, what a pain in the butt that is. So, unfortunately, I gotta desolder all of that just to get this apart. So, let's get ready to do that. Another note too, guys, again, another relatively pretty clean unit for its era. There's a bit of dust here and here, but other than that, this unit's actually pretty pristine inside. Gotta give it some credit, and that's one beefy transformer. Pretty impressive. Check this out, guys. Repaired power supply board in 1990. I believe it's a January. Was it January? Um, January 4th, 1990, and the guy's initials. Funny, one of the things I had to repair in this was the power supply board. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there we go. In 1990, January 4th, whoever that signature is, they even stuck it on the plate, repaired the power supply board. How cool is that? That is awesome to see that. See, stuff like that, that's just nostalgia right there. That is just absolutely cool. It's, it's just so much fun uh, opening up stuff and then finding uh, little notes like that. I opened the Atari when we did the Atari, and there was a note in there saying uh, whatever. It was gibberish to me, but it was just a sticky note. And, and I'm like, okay, maybe it was repaired. But it was just really cool to see that. Okay, I'm also going to put a link to a whole diagram for doing this whole entire job. I'm not taking credit for uh, the know-how of doing this. I just know how to do things, but I still need to, like anyone else, this is the first time doing this job, look at somebody else's work. So I will link that to give credit where credit is due, and then you can, guys, you can see step-by-step -step pictures doing the same thing I'm doing. And one of the things that they give me a hint on, they were using a razor blade, but I'm going to use a spade, and I will show you why. When you're unsoldering this here, we're going to put the spade in to lift the metal as we go along to desolder it. It's just going to be much easier than cleaning it up, and then we can reuse or add to it to put it all back on. That was actually a little bit painful, but it wasn't hard. It was just really painful. Um, so now what I need to do is basically the video is going to solder here. And the audio is going to solder right in here. I know it's going to be hard to see this on camera right now. And then pin one over here is going to be your five volt rail on this ribbon cable. And then pin four is going to be your ground. So that's the only wires that we need to solder to the board. But first, I'm going to need to solder up all the wires to here so I have everything ready and I know what colors I'm going to use to go where. So let me get that done first and we'll move on. So now we have our board ready to solder up to the uh, main board. So this is going to be the wiring going to the board. So it'll be your ground, your audio, your video, and your 5 volt power. And yeah, the board is powered, so that's kind of cool, which is kind of what it's doing. It's upscaling your video resolution. And then you have your uh, audio, ground, and, vi and video out. Not sure how well you can see this, but if you see if I can zoom in here and keep it focused. Pin one was your five volt. Count in four stripes. That was your pin four. There's your ground. Over here is your uh, AV out. And then here is your audio out. So I don't know if you can see that really well, but the pictures will depict it a little better than what I'm showing. Now I'm going to put the shield back on so my wires are all run right and uh, get ready to start drilling and get it all wired up and see what happens. Okay, so after some time and some nerve-wracking work, I wanted the AVs at the back. All the mods show it right here on the side because it's wide open. Um, but I wanted them over here on the back and this was a very tight area, but I got it done. It wasn't the easiest. I had trouble with my holes. So it was just uh, whatever. But anyway, let's get it back together, try it out, and get this thing cleaned up. So we're here at the moment of truth. We're going to fire this up now and hope that everything is working as it should. I don't know. Oh, there we go. The colors seem fine, so that's good. My reds are reds, greens are greens. The sharpness is there. This is one thing you will notice when you do an AV mod on these old 70s, 80s consoles, you will find that it's as close to HD as possible considering they're low graphics. 
So what I'm trying to say is it's not HD, but it looks extremely sharp. It doesn't look like you can really approve upon it, which is really good. And it's all you need. So these upscale boards to give them audio, video, composite, out, um, work very well. So let's see what the picture's like. So there we go. And we're flying, I'm controlling, everything's working. So there we have it. It's a very sharp picture for this type of system. And I know because I've tried this and it just, huh, I could never get it sharp. I could never get, there was always a blur to it. And now there isn't. So props to this. This board is perfect. I'm definitely going to order one for myself. That's for sure. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was, you know, easy enough to, to understand. I didn't go completely into everything on it because it would have just took forever. I showed you guys the main things and the main features of what you had to do. And I will link the actual guide that I used in this to take credit for credit where credit is due. It was not my tutorial. And the game I was testing it with was Mission X, in case you were wondering. Um, interesting game, but I don't know if it's for me. I'm just impressed that this actually really cleaned up the uh, audio video. And just so you can see, all the mods tell you to put the AVs here. I don't like AVs coming out the side. So there was a little tiny spot in the back where I could get enough room to get these in right here. And that's where I put them. And that's something I recommend. You can see in my video where I placed the uh, control board so that you actually have room to do that. Um, whereas they were showing it on the bottom of the plastic. If you have nice insulation, I used double-sided Velcro and I put the Velcro in between the metal and the product so there was no arcing in any which way or form and I think that will work out just perfectly. So guys, if you liked this video, please hit like. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Until next time guys, it's game over.